Hi everyone, my name is Wen Hao Zhang. I'm a PhD student from UCLA. Today I'm presenting our work on ECG heartbeat classification using deep transfer learning with CNN and STFT technique. In today's presentation, I will first introduce the background and motivation of our study. Next, I will talk about the problem formulation and then elaborate on our framework design. Next, I'll present our evaluation results. Finally, I will conclude our presentation with some final remarks. Cardiovascular diseases contribute to one third of the total death in the world. Among all the heart diseases, we focus on the cardiac arrhythmia, which is an irregular heartbeat. Even though arrhythmia can be observed in normal people, some untreated arrhythmia might lead to life-threatening symptoms such as stroke and heart failure. An electrocardiogram is a simple and non-intrusive method to measure electric activity of the heart, and it has been widely adopted to diagnose arrhythmia. Manual inspection on ECG signals for arrhythmia detection can be time-consuming and error-prone, so researchers have resorted to machine learning methods to build automatic arrhythmia detection systems. Problem formulation. Arrhythmia classification can be formulated as a supervised learning problem. In other words, it is to learn a mapping from ECG signals to heartbeat types. However, we encounter two issues in our study. The first issue is there is limited number of well annotated ECG datasets for arrhythmia detection. Secondly, the how the dataset is divided into training and testing set greatly affect the model performance. Before diving into our proposed framework for arrhythmia detection, let me introduce MIT BIH arrhythmia dataset and the data split methods first. The MIT BIH arrhythmia dataset is the most widely used dataset in developing and evaluating ECG based arrhythmia models. This dataset contains ECG recordings collected from 47 patients at 360 Hz. In the literature, there are currently two ways to split the MIT BIH dataset intrapatient split and interpatient split. Intrapatient split paradigm divides the data into training and testing by randomly choosing heartbeat samples. On the contrary, the interpatient split divides the data by patient IDs. As we can see from the left figure, the intrapatient split method may lead to information leakage in certain scenarios, as the heartbeat samples from the same patient may appear in training and testing set at the same time. However, this is not the case if interpatient split is used. So we strongly suggest that intrapatient split should be discouraged in practice when developing arrhythmia classifiers. Purple methods. In this study, we propose two parts of the work the first part is to build an end-to-end -end transfer learning framework with short-term Fourier transform and ResNet-18. Because we use the transfer learning framework with a pre-trained model, we don't have train the we don't have to train the arrhythmia classifier from scratch with a large amount of data. We just need to fine-tune the classifier using MIT BIH arrhythmia dataset. The second part of the work is to investigate how those two data split methods affect the model performance. In this part of the work, we chose two existing models from the literature and then compare their model performance on intrapatient evaluation and interpatient evaluation. In order to have a fair comparison, we implement all the models by ourselves following the architecture proposed in the literature. As we have seen from the previous slides, those ECG recordings are 1D waveform signal data. In order to conform to the input requirement of ResNet-18, we need to pre-process those data. In the data pre-processing stage, we firstly remove the baseline constant signals using a high-pass filter. Then we segment the ECG recordings into a set of individual heartbeats with a length of 1.2 RR intervals. Specifically, we firstly identified the R peaks in those ECG signals. 
and then we took two consecutive R peaks to form a individual heartbeat. The length is set to 1.2 RR interval to include the left margin of the first R peak and the right margin of the second R peak. Next, we use the short term Fourier transform to convert the 1D ECG heartbeats into 2D time frequency spectrums. Those images are grayscale. Here, we present some examples of converting certain type of heartbeats into 2D images. Transfer learning with Resna 18. The pre-processed 2D spectrums are used to fine-tune a pre-trained Resna 18 classifier. This classifier is set to predict five different heartbeats according to the AAMI standard. In the original MIT BIH dataset, there are over 14 different heartbeat annotations. Those annotations are later grouped into five large categories according to AAMI standard as shown in this table. The N category is a normal heartbeat and the rest of the four classes are arrhythmia types. The proposed classifier is evaluated using interpatient split paradigm. The training procedure can be seen in the paper. Experimental results. In this slide, we show the proposed method achieves the best overall accuracy. It also beats the other baselines in terms of precision and recall in most, in most heartbeat classifications. Note that the first baseline model proposed by Katrui wasn't evaluated using interpatient splits in the original work. At the same time, the, even though the second baseline model was evaluated using interpatient splits in the original work, but the testing data set in the original paper was slightly different from ours. So to have a fair comparison, we re-implement those two baseline models and test them along with the proposed model on the same testing dataset. We present those two baseline models evaluated using both interpatient split paradigm and intrapatient split paradigm. We can observe that there's a significant performance drop once those two baseline models are trained using interpatient splits instead of intrapatient splits. We argue that the testing set of the intrapatient paradigm is subject to contamination and is highly likely to have included samples from the same patient appear in the training set. So the intrapatient split method is more likely to generate inflated and biased results compared with the interpatient split method. Final remarks. Our proposed framework provides the opportunity of integrating the pre-trained 2D CNA models for arrhythmia classification. We also demonstrate that the data split paradigm significantly impact the final model performance evaluation. We also argue that the intrapatient split paradigm, even though it generates better results on paper, it is, subject, it is subject to information leakage and should be highly discouraged in practice. During the study, we also observed that there is a lack of consistency of what data samples and heartbeat types to use in the MIT BIH dataset. In the end, we are calling for more transparency of data pre-processing and model development, along with the standard of model evaluation. Thanks for your time. We're opening for question, questions and comments.